Now, this is something we have not done in some time, looking at oil filters. In this case, what's the best filter to buy at AutoZone? It's a little chilly in the garage today, so figured we can do it right here. Let's cut them open and see what's going on. So I'm going to start with the two least expensive filters. And this is perfect because maybe you're at the local parts store and you're thinking, why should I get one over the other? Although you can tell right on the box, 5,000 versus 10,000, but what's really the difference? Why is this almost double the price? Well, the first thing is, let's talk about the shell. Now, this is something I'm going to give you a story. This happened to me last Super Bowl. It really saved me one of these filters because the thickness of the shell is fantastic. But this also tells us, you know, gives us an idea of the burst pressure. I don't want to nerd this out here today, but the burst pressure, but also puncture rates. This is roughly point, we can round it up, 0.5 millimeters, okay? Right here, I'm scratching. And if I compare that to this guy, this does seem a little bit thicker. This is a little bit thicker, the shell. Just a little bit thicker, it feels like to me. I can't weigh it because it depends where I cut the canister. Hold on, my light here is freaking out. Okay, but nonetheless, that's the shell. The thicker the shell, the stronger the puncture rate. That's what I'm trying to get at. Now this guy on top, they are exactly the same on both filters. This is a bypass valve. If for any reason, if these get clogged up, if the filter is clogged, instead of starving the engine of oil, this guy would open up, okay? And then unfiltered oil would at least recycle back into the engine. It's a safety feature. Every filter has them. They're just engineered a little bit differently. So they are using the same one, both of them. We'll talk about this in a moment. Both of them have metal end caps. Every filter is different. Sometimes you won't even find end caps. These have metal end caps and a plastic spine. So to me, that looks to be exactly the same. The difference is the media. So this, the blue STP, your basic STP filter is perfect if you're replacing the engine oil every three to 5,000 miles, right? We can see that 93% efficiency. You can look that up what that means. Ultimately, how efficient is it filtering very small uh, particles, something like 20 to 30 microns, more than likely. Very small particles. This filters at 93%. This filters at 99%. This is known as enhanced cellulose. This is a synthetic blend. It's the media that's different. That's what you're paying for. Whoops, that's what you're paying for here. You're paying for, for the better media, so it can go up to 10,000 miles versus up to 5,000 miles. Uh, what may, I think, is a little bit of a thicker shell, but put that to the side, but you have better filtration. This is perfect for if you're running synthetic. I would use this with conventional or blend personally. So I had a high mileage impressive with 200,000 miles. I changed the oil every three months, no matter what on that vehicle. I would be perfectly happy with this. There's no need for me to overpay and get the extended because I'm changing the oil so often. Just does not make sense. But if you're, if you're extending your oil changes, you have a more modern vehicle with low miles, then that's what this is designed for. So. The other thing though, this is where it also makes a difference. Actually, it can make a very big difference. This is known as the anti-drain back valve. So let me just put this back together so you understand what this is. The whole point behind this, when you shut off the engine, this prevents engine oil from draining back into the engine, okay? So it keeps up the pressure within the engine. So the next time you start your vehicle, you don't have a dry start. The top of the engine is lubed up with oil. It's not dry, that sort of thing, okay? Now what happens with these, and I showed this years ago with a very cheap oil filter that was used at a local, it was uh, almost like a quick loop sort of location and it was like a no name prime, I think was the name of the oil filter. And after 3000 miles, this thing was almost really flimsy falling apart because it has to have a very nice surface area, right? So if this surface area starts to degrade, now, unfiltered oil, I'm sorry, when you turn off the engine, the oil will drain back into the engine. You don't want that. You want to keep the pressure up. So silicone just does a better job versus the base nitrile rubber. This can withstand a wider range of temperature. 
ultimately, the main thing that we are concerned with is higher temperature. This does a much, much, much better job. And if we weigh them, okay, the silicone is six grams and the nitrile rubber is five grams, okay? So that's ultimately what we're looking at here. And then we have the orange Fram filter. To their credit, they did upgrade this filter. A few years ago, this used to be a 5,000 mile filter. Some of you may remember that. Now it's rated at 10,000 miles. One big reason, the silicone anti-drain back valve that we now know can withstand better temperatures, higher temperatures for a longer time. Again, both made in the USA. If I did not mention it, all of these filters are made for the same vehicle. We're not mixing or matching anything. This on its own is $10, this on its own is $11. I just paid for these uh, filters this morning. Regarding the shell, let's take a quick measurement here. Seems to be pretty much the same as STP. And we're at smack 0.5 mil. So that's okay, let's put this over here. Both have, of course, our bypass valves. But where you clearly see the difference is the construction. So STP uses metal end caps and a plastic center core, which is really nicely engineered. It looks very uh, reinforced. This reminds me a lot of the Walmart SuperTech filter. And then Fram uses a paper cardboard end cap material and a metal spine. This is rated, the Fram is rated at 95% efficiency versus the STP again, which is 99%. Both rated at, at 10,000 miles. Both use a silicone anti-drain back valve. And of course, the, both of them have the gaskets on the end. Ultimately, the main difference between these two, if you're buying them on your own, it's not part of a package, is if you, if you want the different engineering, but in terms of filtration, 95%, this is 99%. Other than that, I will say years ago, in the mid 2000s, this was the only filter I used on my vehicles. I never, never, never once had a problem, but I changed the oil on time. I never waited too long to change the oil because it is the lifeblood of an engine. I have no issue running this versus this, whatever's on sale, to be perfectly honest, I'd be happy with either. This you can run conventional blend or synthetic. But ultimately, that's what we have here. And then we have the final two oil filters, Mobile One and K&N. Now, don't forget, this is pricing at the local AutoZone, nowhere else. Mobile One is a $17 filter on its own, K&N, $18. So they are quite expensive, hands down. The first thing I noticed, opening both of these up, the thickness of the shell, incredibly strong and durable. These are nowhere near as strong as these, without a doubt. Let's measure these two very quickly and talk about what we have here. So roughly 1.055 mil on the mobile one, and then K and N, and I'll give you a story as we wrap this up. This really saved me big time last year, last Super Bowl. And pretty much about the same, 1.05, 1.08. Again, these are not the most sophisticated calipers, but very, very, very strong compared to the lower costing filters. The biggest difference you can clearly see, don't forget, this is made for the same vehicle, both of these filters. Look at the surface area on the Mobile One versus the K&N. Now, Mobile One, this is rated at 99% efficiency, has synthetic media metal center core, metal end caps as well. Excellent filter. This is rated at up to 20,000 miles or one year. I would never go that long. With, I mean, that's just lunacy, but that's what it's rated for. Silicone anti-drain back valve. And then again, high quality gasket here to prevent leaks and that sort of thing. And then we have K&N. 98% efficiency, metal end caps, and this has a plastic. I believe in the past, I dug up my, uh, I keep a box here in my shed of the uh, old filters I've done in the past. This is a motorcycle filter that I did a few years ago, and this has a metal core.
core. So I believe they did change that over time because plastic, I imagine, is a little bit cheaper to manufacture. But you see the, the metal core? I don't have, uh, I thought I had an older k and I just can't dig it up right now. But I, I, if I remember correctly, and I can check my old videos, I believe they were metal cores. Maybe that's something they recently changed over. But again, 98% efficiency, rated at 20,000 miles as well. Metal core, metal end caps, plastic center core. Now the bypass, just like the other ones on the K and N, little bypass. Now on the mobile one, it actually kind of fell out because I was a little rough. It was so hard to cut this open and just to get this filter out, it kept hitting on this lip and I had to get pliers to bend this back. And in the process, the little bypass valve fell out. So you can see the engineering. Some, you don't typically see these because I imagine this costs more to manufacture versus just a stamp piece of steel. But uh, I think Wix XP, if I remember correctly, uses a coil spring like this. There are a couple, maybe Royal Purple. I have to look at my records, but typically you don't see the coil spring. You see the stamp piece of steel on the, uh, on the bypass valve. If you're curious on these, anti-drain back valves, what they weigh. So this is K and N. So we're at six grams and then mobile one, four. So a little bit less regarding, regarding the anti-drain back valve, but that's what we have here. That's the main difference. I would certainly come away with this. The surface area is a lot larger on the mobile one versus K and N. And lastly, before we wrap it up here, this nut is not for installation. It's only for removal. If a lot of times you can read comments, oh, there was a leak at these spot welds. That's because sometimes guys tighten this up using a wrench. This is only for removal. And this little guy is to insert a racing, uh, a wire in case you're racing. That's the whole point. You insert this wire here and some tracks they have that uh, that's mandatory, but that's what we got here, guys. So what's the takeaway here? Well, it really comes down to how often you're changing your oil. If you're changing the oil every three to 5,000 miles, this is fine. I mean, this will do the job. These up to 10,000, these up to 20,000 miles. Now, that being said, before we say goodbye here, this saved me big time. This is where you may be thinking, well, I don't need a really thick shell. Last Super Bowl, I figured, let me go snowboarding because everyone is going to be home watching the game. So I went to the local uh, ski lodge nearby and it was so crowded. Uh, by the time I got there, people started to leave, but this place was just so crowded. They just, they had almost like farmland for people to park their cars. It was just that crowded, meaning you had dips and valleys in this grassy knoll area. And on the way home, I, I had my, at the time, the Subaru Impreza. And as I was leaving, I went into this long ditch. And the ditch was so great, it actually dislodged the front bumper from the vehicle. And there was, it was like a piece of uh, thick wood, almost like imagine the end of a broom handle. And when I went into this valley, this piece of wood shot up. And it went right into the canister of the oil filter. Now in the Subaru, it sits up here and then you have the exhaust down here. So I mean, it was like a direct shot right into it. If I had one of these, it would have been a different story. I really think it would have punctured one of these. This, it did put a little dent in it and that's it. I was able to get home nine o'clock at night. Imagine trying to call a tow truck guy nine o'clock at night on Super Bowl Sunday. I mean, they would have been furious or I would have been there until midnight. So this really saved me. So you may be thinking, why the shell? I don't race. I don't do anything off-road. It's little things like that that this can save you. Thanks for watching.